All right. Welcome to our Integration Best Practices training videos. I'm David Gatley, the Senior Certification Engineer with the Certified Integration Team. And with me I have John Anderson. John is a Solution Architect with our Pre-Sales Team. But we like to refer to him as the Jedi Master of all things integration. <laughs> John, would you like to say hello? Hi. Thank you, David, for letting me join you on this uh, training. So in this multi-part training series, uh, we will be showing you the integration best practices as they are leveraged in some of the most common ways. Additionally, we will introduce you to some certification best practices should you wish to get your integration certified with our certified integration program. So let's get started. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you an integration that uses a third-party researching firm to populate data within ServiceNow. Uh, to start that off, we're going to need an application within ServiceNow to organize and display the key elements of this integration. This application will allow any users or roles we have defined to access the integration data and functions. Uh, for a bit of context, here's an already existing application within ServiceNow, the Asset Management application. And within that are several modules that are used to organize and quickly and easily display all of the relevant information within this application to, to the end user. So these modules contain data that is otherwise buried within ServiceNow, making it quick and easy to get and access this information. Um, there are several ways that you can create and organize this information, but John has a pretty sweet tool that will really quick uh, jumpstart you on getting this integration and application menu created. John, would you like to show us your application menu creator? You bet, David. I've posted this on Share, and so we'll show you how to get to it uh, from, from the Share site. From share.servicenow.com, you can look for Integration Menu, and you'll see the result that comes up with Integration Menu Builder. We're going to go ahead and download this. Now, now David, within the platform, there's a concept of an application as well as uh, application menu and we have the custom app creator wizard to generate applications uh, for custom uh, applications but integrations are a little bit different they're not licensed as an application typically they're they're just a menu that organizes this data so this wizard that I created um, does not use the custom app builder it just builds a menu for us so now that I've downloaded uh, that application from Share, I'm going to need to import it into uh, my instance here. So we'll just retrieve that update set that I downloaded. All right, so I'll jump down to this link that says Import Update Set from XML. I'm just going to browse to uh, my Downloads folder and grab that uh, file that I downloaded from Share. We'll go ahead and upload that. All right, there's our application uh, app generator. Let's right click and we're going to preview that update set just to make sure that it doesn't conflict with anything else in my instance. Now this is not something that you have to load on other people's instances. It's, it, this just works on your development instance where you're developing your integration. Uh, it says that there's no conflicts. Let's go ahead and commit that update set. While this commits, John, I realized I didn't make you an update set to capture all your changes. So before we deposit these anywhere we should probably create a new one all right David let's I'm gonna take you over to the local update sets and let you create that update set so to create a new update set simply click the new button and all I'm doing here is creating a bucket to capture all of these changes that John's about to make in our system so let's make a, a new update set John and David's sweet integration uh, we'll keep it as in progress and provide a brief description about what the integration is. So David, an update set captures all of our configuration changes and saves that uh, into one central location so we can what transfer that to other instances? Exactly. It'll give us a, an XML payload that we can bring into and, and out of any instance. Um, we use this also in the certified integration program, which we'll talk to in a later video. but. It's really how you want to track all of your changes and transfer them between instances. See, first of all, David, what we're going to do is is in we're going to assume that there's this fake application inside of ServiceNow called Internet Research. And we're partnering with this uh, third-party research firm. And we're going to do some research, but they're also going to do some research as well. And so we want to keep that research together. And so this will be the purpose of that integration. Uh, here, so we're going to build an integration that is going to integrate our internet research application with 
uh, this third-party company's uh, inter internet research efforts. So David, I'm going to navigate to the uh, integration app generator here. And the, the generator does uh, want to make sure that you do have an update set so that it will capture all the, all the things that this tool is going to generate. So I like to just check just to make sure that um, our update set is selected and active that we created. And it looks like it is. So, so we look like we're in good shape there. So I'm going to just check this checkbox. Now the generator asks for three things, and it, it for first is just a, a display name, and for your integration. So I'm just going to call this uh, Acme Research, and then it'll it'll want a prefix uh, for your app that has no spaces. This is used for libraries and roles and such, and and it'll auto auto select something that uh, based off of our display name. So we'll just leave that alone. Uh, also, we do like to use system properties, and uh, this tries to create a prefix for your system properties. Um, I know that with your integration partners program, yeah, you offer a, a vendor prefix to, to your partners. It's also a good practice for integrators to have their own prefix as well, just to help avoid namespaces. I like to use uh, just my initials, JJA. Uh, dot integration and, and then dot the the app name for all my properties. So I'm going to use that. If if you're a vendor with an integrations partner program, you'll probably use your vendor key there. Exactly. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and uh, generate the integration application really quickly. And this is building uh, sample roles uh, scripts even uh, as well as the menu system for the integration using best practice techniques. So it looks like it's done. We'll type in Acme, and there's the new uh, menu that was built by the tool, David. Again, you don't need to use this tool. This tool is not offered by ServiceNow. It's just as is. It's just to help kickstart the generation of a menu with typical integration components. Uh, we can go through here and disable components that we're not going to use for our integration, but just to give a, a high-level view of, of some of the things that this builds out automatically for you, uh, one best practice is to create a configurable uh, properties page for your integration. And this properties page it can have some uh, instructions on how to install and configure the integration for, your, for, a cust for the environment that this is going into. Uh, also, it has some settings. The, the tool right now just generates uh, one custom setting, and that's the uh, log verbosity uh, level. It's a best practice that your integrations do log to a, a source specific to that integration and also make it configurable so that you can have different levels of logging. We don't, we don't require a number of levels. We just require at least that there's a debug level and a non-debug level. But by default, I like to have uh, low, medium, and high. So, so we offer those settings uh, out of the box. If we want to add additional settings, or change these instructions, this template of instructions, we can jump back down to this settings categories module. This will allow you to uh, update that text uh, of instructions as well as create new properties uh, for your integration. Also, this in the middle, there is a, a source code and script section. All this does is it provides a an auto-generated list of different components that might exist within an integration. It'll also generate a main script library, uh, which we can jump to and see what it's generated by default. Here's that logging function. So if we if we use our helper library to log statements, it's going to log in the verbosity that's set in our settings. And um, so you would put any other additional uh, functions for your integration here in this primary script include. Um, and then it, it, it provides a template that if you're leveraging business rules or REST messages or SOAP messages, that those can be listed out here as well. Obviously, we haven't done anything, so nothing's going to show up uh, in these lists uh, at this point. And then finally, there's a diagnostic se section. Our best practices state that if you're building an integration, uh, make it easy to uh, to diagnose problems. So I like to have a log uh, link where we display log statements that are just for that integration. 
and if you're using mid servers or the eccq it'd be great to have an eccq link that maybe filters on uh, communication that goes through the eccq uh, using your integration so we can cover those later if we need to um, why don't why don't you why don't I let you tailor this uh, to to fit your needs because obviously you're not going to need all those menu items for this particular integration. Sure, thanks, John. And uh, for those of you looking at this that have tried to create this yourselves, I'm sure you can see the tremendous value in in uh, getting jump started with these pieces. It saves quite a bit of time uh, doing this. Um, so if you don't mind, John, I'm going to come in here with a hatchet and edit your application and get rid of some of these modules that don't apply to the type of integration that we're going to be creating today. So to do this, I simply click, right-click on my Acme Research menu here, and I get that Edit Application menu. Um, from within here, I can see various ap uh, application properties uh, as they relate to the navigation menu and, and the application from a, a high level. Um, specifically, I can scroll down and see all of the modules that I have activated uh, within this application. So many of these we don't need um, and to, to hide them from view I simply come in here and set them from active to inactive by changing the, the true to false in here. Uh, so for instance I know that we're not going to be using soap I can set this to false. I can also multi-select some of these so if I hold down the command key uh, I can select multiple items here at once. You have so many valuable pieces in here um, that I am struggling to find which ones I want to remove. Um, but we'll take all of these out right here. And again, if, if we decide that we need any of these at a later point in time, we can simply come back in here, right click on this again, and set them to true. So these don't go away completely. We're not deleting these from the application. We're simply removing these from the view to really provide a, a better uh, more organized view for the users. Uh, I also don't think we're going to be using ECCQ, so I'll get rid of that as well. Uh, so that should update here in a second. And now you see a, a condensed list within our, our application. Uh, so with that, we have a, a shell that we can start uh, configuring and, and putting our real integration uh, data into. Um, so I think that, that kind of gets us to the end of this video. John, where, where are we headed next? Well, actually, I wonder, David, what if we want to secure this application so uh, only uh, people with the proper role can configure or even view any part of this uh, menu for the integration? How sure. would we do that? Sure. Thanks for, for bringing that up. So within the application menu editor here, uh, we call out a role for the application at a high level. Uh, by clicking this lock, I can define the the uh, access controls that are available, who can access and view the content of this application uh, from the navigation menu here. Uh, so here's the, the role that we defined when we created our application. Additionally, if I want to provide admin access or any other roles specifically within uh, this slush bucket here, I just simply select them and move them over. What that'll do is provide uh, access to the entire application. Um, further, um, I can really come in here, so you, you see that each module has a role assigned to it as well. If some of these modules happen to be a little bit more sensitive or, or uh, need to be secured at a higher level, you can come in and, and define an additional role per module. Um, well, let me save those changes first. So now I've, I've defined two roles for the application, and I want to go in and, and define a, a further role for the settings module. So if I click on the settings module itself, I have a, an additional role right here uh, that I can define and say I only want admin to view this module. Uh, by, by updating the module role itself, I then limit further which modules are available to specific users as they're logged in. So once this nav refreshes, um, you should see that the settings module is now only available to admin users. And there it is. So thanks for calling that out, John. That would have been a, a best practice that we definitely wouldn't want to skip. Now, one important note, David, to make is when you're assigning roles to these application menus and to these modules, uh, that's one level of security, but that's more or less a visual uh, sense of security. You still will want to, they, 
if somebody knows the table structure, they can still view the data, right? And so at that point, when you build your integration and you're, you're adding tables or, or other elements to that integration, you're going to want to build ACLs or access control rules on those tables and involve uh, this role or these other roles that you may have created for this integration. Uh, just to secure that down 100%. Uh, Absolutely. All right, well, I think, yeah, as David mentioned, I think we've reached the goal of this video. Uh, what we wanted to show is that uh, kind of the best practices around building a visual layer for your integration that makes it easy for uh, the right people to come and to both configure uh, or diagnose if there's problems and troubleshoot or even enhance or change in a later date. So everything involved with the integration, it's nice to have right there in the menu to help uh, e for easy navigation and an easy understanding of your integration. Uh, also, we talked about securing those menus down with, uh, with roles and, and ACLs. And finally, uh, you know, how to make, um, how, to, how to set up a properties page and, and make your integration configurable so that if you move it from system to system or from customer to customer, uh, the, the integration can be easily modified to that environment. Thanks for watching video one in the series. Be sure to check out the next video in the series, the Import Set Best Practices video.